What is going on guys? Marcus here with the Reformation Wood Shop. Today is all about getting jiggy with it. Yeah, I can't dance. So a little while ago I was watching a video by Craft Lab Knives and one of the cool tips they had for making knives was to use milk carton cut out templates. You guys know if you've watched my video covering how I make batter rings out of saw blades, I need a repeatable template. This is pretty cool, except it smells a little funny. It's not as long term as I'd like it to be even though it's longer term than say paper. And if I want to make jigs that have mechanical uses like uh, running a router against it for a cutting board or something like that, this is not going to cut it. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I take my cutting board game to the next level using clear plexiglass as a template or a jig. All right, let's get jiggy with it. All right guys, so the first template that I'm going to be starting with is one that I've used in the past. I wanted to go ahead and make this cutting board because I knew it was something that I'd continue to use frequently. I took the old template I had and used it one last time to trace it onto this template, which is going to be my forever template. This template is unique because it's two templates in one. One side is a rounded edge of the cutting board that you'd be making, and one side is a flat square edge of the cutting board. Depending on which way you flip it, you can get two different cutting boards out of this one jig. I would recommend using this method with any pattern jig that you're going to be making. Whatever you're working on, it's always nice to have something that you can duplicate one side and then flip it to the other side because all the sides that you create should be symmetrical, identical, or without error. After I've traced the pattern on the board that I made, I take it over to the bandsaw and cut it out. It's a pretty simple process. All you gotta do is follow your lines, get as close as possible, and then use your sander to make sure the job is perfect. To get that perfect circle right in the middle of the handle, I just take a one inch bit and drill straight through the middle. To finish off this board and give it a nice edge profile, I take a quarter inch round over bit and my router and run it over all of the sides of the board. This next template is one that I did not have prior to making this video, but I've wanted for a long time. And this one is super easy to make by yourself. We're going to call this one the Gucci Purse because it provides a perfect handle for your cutting boards and it just looks awesome. Okay, so I told myself to cut the big hole before I cut the round handled shape because I was worried that less material would mean it would crack. But I didn't do that because I don't follow the rules. And not in like a bad boy kind of way, but like a dummy, like you forget and you don't do things in the right order kind of way. So we're going to do this and we're going to pray that it works. All right. So wish me luck. To make this jig, the first thing you want to do is get your piece of acrylic and create a horizon line on that piece. Then in the center of that piece, create a circle with a diameter of about three inches. After you do that, measure out an inch on each side because an inch is probably the minimum I would go for the handle and then create another circle that intersects with those points on your horizon line. So just to catch you up on where we're at with this cutting board, I used blue tape to glue my template down to the actual cutting board. I put tape on each piece, the template and the cutting board, and then I glued the tape to the tape. So after I'm done running the router over the jig, I can just take the tape off of both pieces. And just like with the first board, I gave this one a nice rounded edge profile just to pop it off and make it perfect. And now it's time to oil these beautiful cutting boards up and really see what that maple and cherry wood has going on inside that grain. These first two boards that I showed you guys are super simple and practical and it's something that you can sell for sure. However, everything from this point on is meant to draw eyes from across the room straight to your booth at your local craft show. This stuff is weird and awesome. I've seen wooden deer antlers dozens of times on all kinds of weird cool wooden projects, but I don't think I've ever seen them on a cutting board or a charcuterie board. So that's what we're doing, obviously. I googled pictures of a nice rack and this is what I got, obviously, because my safety search filter is on, you pervs. Anyways, I transferred the photo I found over to a Word document, printed that out, cut it out, traced it onto this piece of acrylic, and then went at it with the bandsaw. This is one template that I wasn't super concerned about the symmetry of it, 
because antlers are unique and I don't think that if you made identical antlers that it would make much of a difference than if they had their own unique little features. After cutting it out of the bandsaw, I used my rotary tool to reinforce the idea of uniqueness and I shaped up these antlers a little bit to make them look a little bit more realistic and defined. And speaking of unique, I changed the rectangle body to make it a tapered look so that it looked like a coffin and then I blacked it out with Rubio Black because it's spooky season baby! This next cutting board is my absolute favorite of the bunch. It's probably my favorite design of all cutting board designs that exist on the planet. It is the crook necked handle walnut cutting board. This template is another template that I hand drew and it's something that you can draw yourself and it doesn't have to actually be that perfect. It's a goofy looking neck that you can cut out of the bandsaw and then shape with your disc or belt sander and make it look exactly how you want it to look. As far as I can tell, this is a pretty common handle, so if you want to just do a Google search instead of drawing it, I'm sure you can find something similar to this one. No worries either way. Off to the bandsaw yet again because this is such a thick board to take away most of the material and reveal that neck. After cutting the shape of the handle out of the board, I used that same one inch bit from the very first cutting board I made to make the hole in the handle on this one. I am making another jig for this specific cutting board, so that means two jigs, one board. This jig is in the shape of Texas, the beautiful state of Texas, and it is going to be for an inlay, an epoxy inlay to be exact. I used the coping saw to make this jig because I didn't want to be boring and continue to use the bandsaw or to continue to use plain old tools. Blood, sweat, and tears went into this one. I hope you like it. I used the blue tape trick here again and the star bond so that I can get a nice hold while I'm routing the Texas out of this cutting board. In order for this jig to work for you, you need to make sure that the router bit that you have is a flush bit with a bearing on the top of the actual bit. That way it can ride across the jig and duplicate whatever pattern it is that you're trying to make. Because there are tiny corners inside of this jig the router bit cannot reach, clean out with the chisel is necessary. This epoxy inlay jig was pretty much an experiment in and of itself. I had never done anything like this before. So after sanding it down and putting a little bit of oil on it, I was so excited to see what I had done. This board is definitely staying at home with me and it's not getting sold anytime soon. The last cutting board template design idea I have for you guys is actually quite puzzling. Okay, that was that was a horrible joke, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is the last one I've got for you guys and this one is uh, really just a fun one that you can experiment with yourself and it doesn't have to be a cutting board. It can be whatever you want it to be. My daughter chose to make it her own personal big huge puzzle pieces. So you could call this set of boards a children's toy if that's your thing. Anyways, just to mix it up a little bit, I cut this one out on the scroll saw because I know you're tired of seeing my bandsaw. And uh, the pieces here needed to be pretty exact, so I wanted to make sure I went right on the line. There you go, right there. Oh, you did it! You did it! These templates are just the first of many that I know for sure I'm going to be making because I want my cutting boards to be cool and unique if I'm going to be making them to sell. I love how durable they are, how easy they are to store away, and the fact that I can have a repeatable template with no defects for basically all eternity. Also, it's just nice to give old plexiglass a new life. Recycle, folks. 
Through this process, I figured out that plexiglass is extremely useful, and there's a lot of footage that I didn't end up putting into this video because I did not want it to be cluttered or crammed or over stuffed. If you're interested in seeing a follow-up video where I show you all of the things I'm using plexiglass for, like a shelf pin jig, like a bow tie jig, I even made a jig that centers up hardware on drawer faces if you're interested in that. Maybe I'll include that in a second video. I'm sure there's a hundred other things I could find to add to that video. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'd love to know which template was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section down below. I appreciate it. I hope you got something from this video. I hope it was educational. I hope you step up your cutting board game. Stop making squares, all right? It's boring. Do something different. Anyways, uh, I appreciate it. Let me know what you think. And if I earned it, like I said, hit me up with the subscribe. I do all kinds of crazy things on this channel and I'd love to have you back. See you in the next one, guys. Thanks.